Fraud, Wikipedia Audio In law, fraud is deliberate deception to secure unfair or unlawful gain, or to deprive a victim of a legal right. Fraud itself can be a civil wrong, a criminal wrong or it may cause no loss of money, property, or a legal right but still be an element of another civil or criminal wrong. The purpose of fraud may be monetary gain or other benefits, such as obtaining a passport or travel document, driver's license, or qualifying for a mortgage by way of false statements. A hoax is a distinct concept that involves deliberate deception without the intention of gain or of materially damaging or depriving a victim. In common law jurisdictions, as a civil wrong, fraud is a tort. While the precise definitions and requirements of proof vary among jurisdictions, the requisite elements of fraud as a tort generally are the intentional misrepresentation or concealment of an important fact upon which the victim is meant to rely, and in fact does rely, to the harm of the victim. Proving fraud in a court of law is often said to be difficult. That difficulty is found, for instance, in that each and every one of the elements of fraud must be proven, that the elements include proving the states of mind of the perpetrator and the victim, and that some jurisdictions require the victim to prove fraud by clear and convincing evidence. As a civil wrong The remedies for fraud may include rescission of a fraudulently obtained agreement or transaction, the recovery of a monetary award to compensate for the harm caused, punitive damages to punish or deter the misconduct, and possibly others. In cases of a fraudulently induced contract, fraud may serve as a defense in a civil action for breach of contract or specific performance of contract. Obstruction of Justice, 18 U.S.C. 704 which criminalizes false representation of having been awarded any decoration or medal authorized by Congress for the Armed Forces of the United States. Fraud may serve as a basis for a court to invoke its equitable jurisdiction. In common law jurisdictions, as a criminal offense, fraud takes many different forms some general and some specific to particular categories of victims or misconduct. The elements of fraud as a crime similarly vary. The requisite elements of perhaps most general form of criminal fraud, theft by false pretense, are the intentional deception of a victim by false representation or pretense with the intent of persuading the victim to part with property and with the victim parting with property in reliance on the representation or pretense and with the perpetrator intending to keep the property from the victim. Section 380 of the Criminal Code provides the general definition for fraud in Canada. 380 Every one who, by deceit, falsehood or other fraudulent means, whether or not it is a false pretense within the meaning of this act, defrauds the public or any person, whether ascertained or not, of any property, money, or valuable security or any service. In addition to the penalties outlined above, the court can also issue a prohibition order under S. 380.2. It can also make a restitution order under S. 380.3. The Canadian courts have held that the offence consists of two distinct elements. The Supreme Court of Canada has held that deprivation is satisfied on proof of detriment, prejudice, or risk of prejudice, it is not essential that there be actual loss. Deprivation of confidential information in the nature of a trade secret or copyrighted material that has commercial value, has also been held to fall within the scope of the offense. As a criminal offense Zhang Yingyu's story collection The Book of Swindles testifies to rampant commercial fraud, especially involving itinerant businessmen, in late Ming China. 
The journal Science reported in 2017 that fraud is rife in Chinese academia, resulting in numerous article retractions and harm to China's international prestige. The Economist, CNN, and other media outlets regularly report on incidents of fraud or bad faith in Chinese business and trade practices. Forbes cites cybercrime as a persistent and growing threat to Chinese consumers. Half of all UK companies say that they have been the victim of fraud or of economic crime in the last two years according to a major survey conducted by professional services firm PwC. BBC News Online reported in 2016 that the estimated value lost through fraud in the UK was £193 billion a year. In January 2018 the Financial Times reported that the value of UK fraud hit a 15-year high of pound 2.11 BN in 2017 according to a study. The article said that the accountancy firm BDO examined reported fraud cases worth more than £50,000 and found that the total number rose to 577 in 2017 compared with 212 in 2003. The study found that the average amount stolen in each incident rose to £3.66 million, up from £1.5 million in 2003. As at November 2017 fraud is the most common criminal offence in the UK according to a study by Crow Clark Whitehill, Experian, and the Centre for Counter-Fraud Studies. The study suggests the UK loses over £190 billion per year to fraud. £190 billion is more than 9% of the UK's projected GDP for 2017 billion according to Statistics Times. The estimate for fraud in the UK figure is more than the entire GDP of countries such as Romania, Qatar, and Hungary. According to another review by the UK anti-fraud charity Fraud Advisory Panel, Business fraud accounted for pound 144 bn, while fraud against individuals was estimated at pound 9.7 bn. The FAP has been particularly critical of the support available from the police to victims of fraud in the UK outside of London. Although victims of fraud are generally referred to the UK's National Fraud and Cyber Crime Reporting Centre, Action Fraud the FAP found that there was little chance that these crime reports would be followed up with any kind of substantive law enforcement action by UK authorities, according to the report. In July 2016 it was reported that fraudulent activity levels in the UK increased in the 10 years to 2016 from £52 billion to £193 billion. This figure would be a conservative estimate, since as the former Commissioner of the City of London Police, Adrian Leppard, has said, only one in twelve such crimes are actually reported. Donald Toon, director of the NCA's Economic Crime Command, stated in July 2016, the annual losses to the UK from fraud are estimated to be more than pound 190 bn. Figures released in October 2015 from the Crime Survey of England and Wales found that there had been 5.1 million incidents of fraud in England and Wales in the previous year, affecting an estimated 1 in 12 adults and making it the most common form of crime. By Region Canada Also in July 2016, the Office for National Statistics stated almost 6 million fraud and cyber crimes were committed last year in England and Wales and estimated there were 2 million computer misuse offences and 3.8 million fraud offences in the 12 months to the end of March 2016. Fraud affects 1 in 10 people in the UK. According to the ONS most frauds relate to bank account fraud. 
These figures are separate from the headline estimate that another 6.3 million crimes were perpetrated in the UK against adults in the year to March 2016. China United Kingdom England, Wales and Northern Ireland Fraud Act Serious Fraud Office Fraud is apparently low on the list UK law enforcement priorities. Controversially, the crime does not feature on a new crime harm index published by the Office for National Statistics. Michael Levi, professor of criminology at Cardiff University, remarked in August 2016 that it was deeply regrettable fraud is being left out of the first index despite being the most common crime reported to police in the UK. Professor Levi said if you've got some categories that are excluded, they are automatically left out of the police's priorities. The chief of the National Audit Office, Sir Anya's Morse has also said for too long, as a low-value but high-volume crime, online fraud has been overlooked by government, law enforcement, and industry. It is now the most commonly experienced crime in England and Wales and demands an urgent response. The Fraud Act 2006 is an act of the Parliament of the United Kingdom. It affects England and Wales and Northern Ireland. It was given royal assent on November 8, 2006, and came into effect on January 15, 2007. The Act gives a statutory definition of the criminal offence of fraud, defining it in three classes fraud by false representation, fraud by failing to disclose information, and fraud by abuse of position. It provides that a person found guilty of fraud is liable to a fine or imprisonment for up to 12 months on summary conviction, or a fine or imprisonment for up to 10 years on conviction on indictment. This act largely replaces the laws relating to obtaining property by deception, obtaining a pecuniary advantage and other offences that were created under the Theft Act 1978. National Fraud Authority The Serious Fraud Office is an arm of the Government of the United Kingdom, accountable to the Attorney General. The National Fraud Authority is the government agency coordinating the counter-fraud response in the UK. SAFAS is the UK's leading fraud prevention service a not-for-profit membership organization for all sectors that enables organizations to share and access fraud data using their databases. SAFAS is dedicated to the prevention of fraud, including internal fraud by staff, and the identification of financial and related crime. A SAFAS study found that the number of reported cases of identity fraud jumped by 57 per center between 2014 and 2015. Drawing from its reporting database of 261 organizations, SAFAS found that 148,463 people reported having their identity stolen in 2015 up from 94,492 the previous year. The rise of social media has been blamed. Safaz has warned that social media sites such as Facebook, Twitter and LinkedIn are becoming a hunting ground for fraudsters. In July 2016 the BBC referred to a recently published Safaz report which estimated the annual cost of fraud in the UK was pound 193 bn equal to nearly £3,000 per head of population. In March 2017, Safaz reported that identity fraud had reached record levels with 173,000 cases recorded to its fraud database in 2016 the highest number ever recorded by members of SAFAS. That trend continued through 2017, with SAFAS reporting more than 89,000 cases of identity fraud in the first six months of the year.
Safa's data from 2016 and 2017 also highlighted the growing issue of money mules people who allow their bank accounts to be used to launder money. Safaz reported that the number of young people allowing their accounts to be used to transfer the proceeds of crime had risen by an unprecedented 75 per center in the last year. Safaz the UK's leading fraud prevention service The proof requirements for criminal fraud charges in the United States are essentially the same as the requirements for other crimes, guilt must be proved beyond a reasonable doubt. Throughout the United States fraud charges can be misdemeanors or felonies depending on the amount of loss involved. High-value frauds can also include additional penalties. For example, in California losses of $500,000 or more will result in an extra 2, 3, or 5 years in prison in addition to the regular penalty for the fraud. The U.S. government's 2006 fraud review concluded that fraud is a significantly underreported crime, and while various agencies and organizations were attempting to tackle the issue, greater cooperation was needed to achieve a real impact in the public sector. The scale of the problem pointed to the need for a small but high-powered body to bring together the numerous counter-fraud initiatives that existed. United States According to Bloomberg, auto loan application fraud rates in the United States has been steadily rising over the past few years. This type of fraud expected to double from about $2 to $3 billion in 2015 to $4 to $6 billion in 2017. Although elements may vary by jurisdiction and the specific allegations made by a plaintiff who files a lawsuit that alleged fraud, typical elements of a fraud case in the United States are that Criminal fraud Civil fraud Cost To establish a civil claim of fraud most jurisdictions in the United States require that each element of a fraud claim be plead with particularity and be proved by a preponderance of the evidence, meaning that it is more likely than not that the fraud occurred. Some jurisdictions impose a higher evidentiary standard, such as Washington State's requirement that the elements of fraud be proved with clear, cogent, and convincing evidence or Pennsylvania's requirement that common law fraud be proved by clear and convincing evidence. The measure of damages in fraud cases is normally computed using one of two rules. Special damages may be allowed if shown to have been proximately caused by defendant's fraud and the damage amounts are proved with specificity. Many jurisdictions permit a plaintiff in a fraud case to seek punitive or exemplary damages. The typical organization loses 5% of its annual revenue to fraud, with a median loss of $160,000. Frauds committed by owners and executives were more than nine times as costly as employee fraud. The industries most commonly affected are banking, manufacturing, and government. Fraud can be committed through many media, including mail, wire, phone, and the Internet. International dimensions of the web and ease with which users can hide their location, the difficulty of checking identity and legitimacy online, and the simplicity with which hackers can divert browsers to dishonest sites and steal credit card details have all contributed to the very rapid growth of Internet fraud. In some countries, tax fraud is also prosecuted under false billing or tax forgery. There have also been fraudulent discoveries, e.g., in science, to gain prestige rather than immediate monetary gain. Beyond laws that aim at prevention of fraud, there are also governmental and non-governmental organizations that aim to fight fraud. Between 1911 and 1933, 47 states adopted the so-called Blue Sky Law status. 
These laws were enacted and enforced at the state level and regulated the offering and sale of securities to protect the public from fraud. Though the specific provisions of these laws varied among states, they all required the registration of all securities offerings and sales, as well as of every U.S. stockbroker and brokerage firm. However, these blue sky laws were generally found to be ineffective. To increase public trust in the capital markets the President of the United States, Franklin D. Roosevelt, established the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission. The main reason for the creation of the SEC was to regulate the stock market and prevent corporate abuses relating to the offering and sale of securities and corporate reporting. The SEC was given the power to license and regulate stock exchanges, the companies whose securities traded on them, and the brokers and dealers who conducted the trading. For detection of fraudulent activities on the large scale, massive use of data analysis is required, in particular predictive analytics or forensic analytics. Forensic analytics is the use of electronic data to reconstruct or detect financial fraud. The steps in the process are data collection, data preparation, data analysis, and the preparation of a report and possibly a presentation of the results. Using computer-based analytic methods Nigrani's wider goal is the detection of fraud, errors, anomalies, inefficiencies, and biases which refer to people gravitating to certain dollar amounts to get past internal control thresholds. The analytic tests usually start with high-level data overview tests to spot highly significant irregularities. In a recent purchasing card application these tests identified a purchasing card transaction for 3 million Costa Rica colons. This was neither a fraud nor an error, but it was a highly unusual amount for a purchasing card transaction. These high-level tests include tests related to Benford's law and possibly also those statistics known as descriptive statistics. These high tests are always followed by more focused tests to look for small samples of highly irregular transactions. The familiar methods of correlation and time series analysis can also be used to detect fraud and other irregularities. Forensic analytics also includes the use of a fraud risk scoring model to identify high-risk forensic units. Forensic analytics also includes suggested tests to identify financial statement irregularities, but the general rule is that analytic methods alone are not too successful at detecting financial statement fraud. Apart from fraud there are several related categories of intentional deceptions that may or may not include the elements of personal gain or damage to another individual. Types of Fraudulent Acts Anti-Fraud Movements Detection Notable Fraudsters Related